Hello everyone, welcome back to Close to Be Milkshake. I am your host, along with support puppet, Mr. Chicken. Headbang, headbang, don't fall off your thing. Okay. Today, we're gonna talk about narcissistic rage. Now, in the past, I have made a video on um, different examples. I asked my Cluster B group what their uh, examples of their rage and what they do and uh, all across the Cluster B board. So if I remember, I will put that in the comments. Okay, that video. But today we're going to talk about where the rage actually stems from and the ridiculousness behind the raging events. Um, number one, this type of anger, I'm sure that you've seen all the narcissistic videos out there and everything that say that anger is the number one emotion that a narcissistic person has. These feelings were suppressed or tried to be suppressed in childhood. And if the child wasn't able to fight back, they, um, they're holding all of this shit in. You know, you, if, if you cannot, um, you know how you feel when you want uh, to cry or you're grieving in some way and you're not letting yourself feel those feelings or sadness or whatever and it's like something is just sitting on your chest and it's very hard to breathe you might even have lots of anxiety and stuff like that well for the people who had to do that growing up they now have this repressed feeling of anger sitting underneath them all the time and they are going to explode for reasons that don't even match the situation that is happening so um i know i have done this obviously um you say something you do something I am going to react not at the same level as how I should from whatever the fuck it is that you were talking to me about. So, and it can be something, you know, very simple that a normal person would be able to have a constructive conversation about. So the only thing that I can think of at the moment is um, when my one of my partners had said relationships should be easy. This is a big triggering thing for me because relationships aren't easy. And if you think you, they are, that's basically saying if you're struggling, if you're not perfect in every way, you know, this is childhood trauma. Shit. If you're not perfect in every way, then you're defective in the relationship and you're not worth being in the relationship with. So instead of me just explaining that there will be conflict in relationships and it's how, you know, you work through them and if we can see each other's perspective and blah, blah, blah. Now, I wasn't even there yet. <laughs> I couldn't even fucking say that shit. That's why I reacted. I reacted with anger. I was going to break up with this person. Um, I'm driving in traffic two hours just to grab all my shit from this person's house <laughs> you know i was like i'm done with you i'm done because to me that was dismissive for him to say that when um i can't think and it's just all of my feelings and emotions are reacting and how do i react i react in anger Okay, so there's two different types of narcissistic rage. This can be the verbal explosive, which I just talked about. And then there's the silent treatment, 
the sulking. Okay, there's um, for me giving the silent treatment. Um, my first reaction, everything is like this feeling that comes out inside of me. I'm not like, I'm going to do this. You do something, I'm reacting to it. And if I'm not raging on you verbally, cutting you down, making you feel small because you made me feel small, I'm going to shut down and not speak to you. I, I, it's um, inner focused rage. Now I'm not raging on myself to where I'm becoming depressed. I'm fucking, I fucking hate you. And I am um, shutting down because, um, you know, there would be a sharp object in your eyeball. If I let myself react in a verbally violent way, um, I used to be physically abusive when I was younger, you know, to animals, my sister, other neighborhood kids and stuff. So I had to, so it's bubbling there inside and I had to work really hard on to keeping my hands to myself and not being um, destructive. I might still set shit on fire, um, rip up things, um, but I don't throw things and break things. I like just hands on and destroying. <laughs> All right. So, um, silent treatment is to, um, deal with what's going on inside of me. Um, withdrawing from you, it doubles as a punishment because I don't want to fucking talk to you right now. Um, I, this is your timeout as well as me giving myself a timeout. But one thing that I can't relate to is being um, disconnected from uh, my intimate partner for long periods of time. It, I feel very uncomfortable so um, I don't know where other people fall on the spectrum, if that's more um, psychopathy, uh, sociopathy, whatever, that um, they can go for long periods of time living in the same household with you and not speaking to you. Now, sometimes I just remembered, sometimes there's um, a disconnect from your partner. And so, but, you don't hate your partner. You're just not talking to your partner. There's nothing to say. You're not punishing your partner. Nothing. You know, that's different than um, the silent treatment with um, purpose. And maybe you guys can answer this for me, but if you have experienced both, does it feel different? Because that would be new to me. Because to me, it feels different. It's like, I'm not talking to you just because I got nothing to say, you know, I'm not, I'm not putting any effort into the relationship or anything, you know, and you know, we live together and whatever, you know, but that's not a silent treatment. I'm not withholding anything, but to you, it might feel abusive. Okay. But I don't see it that way. Okay. So, um, some uh, cluster bees will sulk, um, you know, they're, they're sad, <laughs> they're the victim, you know, of you. That's them turning the anger inward and actually, you know, feeling the victim, you know, for real. Now they've been doing this forever. They know that they're going to get this reaction from you playing the victim. And they believe that they are, you know, it's like ingrained, you know, you hurt me, you hurt, you have to apologize now. Even if um, I'm the one that started um, the bullshit, because I'm unaware, I'm, I'm, I'm angry, I'm reacting to you, you're getting angry, now I'm the victim, 
you have to apologize to me. You know, it, it, it's so bullshit because there's no conflict resolution at all. You know, maybe a micro, somebody's got to say, I'm sorry, but there's no real change, nothing. You just keep going on uh, sleepwalking through life with your partner. There's no growth. Stagnant, stagnant shit. Ugh. All right, also narcissistic rage is um, the stalking, okay? They want their, you know, there's heightened emotions, you know, and they fucking, they wanna see, they wanna see what you're doing. Where'd you go? Why aren't you fighting with me? One thing that a narcissistic person does not like is um, being ignored unless that's what they want to do to you. You know, it's all about us. So um, if I don't want to be ignored, if I, if, you know, if I'm not trying to get the fuck away from you and everything, leave me alone, block, fuck off, burr. And you're doing that to me. Um, I will, you know, I will want, I may not actively um, chase you down. I might do some covert stuff, you know, but um, I really want you to fight me than be like indifferent, you know? I want passion, that's passion. That's, <laughs> you know, chaos is romantic, you know? If, if you have these heightened feelings for me, that means you are still connected to me. That's why when I would see like exes be upset still over their exes and actually have this um, anger or whatever, I'd be like, you still fucking care about this motherfucker? And then I think about myself too, like I would be um, for the longest time angry about my ex-husband propositioning my sister um that sat you know with anger inside of out you know inside of me but you know i don't want him back or anything so that fucks with my head a little bit it's like um you know i like when somebody's upset with me um if if i want them in my life you know I don't want I don't want to be fucking berated and bitched at by my mother or anything or my sister <laughs> you know or or an ex I don't fucking like you know you know I have to want that you know otherwise I'm get the fuck away from me all right um harassments so somebody raging which they're splitting you black you will also be harassed. You see a lot of this in borderline stuff. They turn into secondary psychopaths and they will come at you with purpose, plotting revenge, plotting to hurt your whole life, trying to, you know, when they're splitting you black. When they melt back into human form, they'll just be like, okay, I love you again, until they start ruminating about the anger that they had over you and then they're mad again. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. There, there's really no forgiveness. You know, processing forgiveness? Not really. Um, you have to um, kind of put yourself in the other person's shoes and stuff like that. And usually people who are raging out on you, even normies, um, you lose your empathy when you're mad. You have no empathy. You just want justice. You did this to me, man. You're, I'm going to destroy you. And then you also will feel um, some guilt later because you self-reflect. And you, you know, and some of you do work on yourself and everything like that. And then you feel the fool of lowering yourself to um, the narcissistic level. You know, I get that and I hear that too. Um, sabotaging uh, the other person's life, trying to really destroy, um, you know, rip off their mask. 
shit like that. I'm saying this stuff as a, um, just so you can put yourself in a narcissistic person's shoes because they want to do the same thing to you and destroy your whole world. This has to go along with narcissistic injuries um, and, uh, is it? Damn it, I wrote it down somewhere. Uh, narcissistic collapse, I'll get into that um, in another video. So, um, also you will see when um, they're just fighting with you and raging out on you. This is, this one's kind of funny, but you know, our brains are mashed potatoes, okay? And when we're fighting, we go down into so many different avenues of the fight. Because really, when you fight with somebody, you're not fighting over this subject. There's an underlying core to the thing, okay? You never do the dishes, you blah, blah. The underlying issue is I feel disrespected. Um, I may also feel a sense of codependency where I'm the one that's always trying to do these things to get a good reflection from you. Um, uh, so now I'm holding resentments and everything and now there's going to be a fight. You know, either I tried to ask you all the time and you're dismissive all the time, then there's a huge fucking fight, okay? underlying feelings, dismissive, fight. So um, it's gonna segue as well. So now I'm not just mad at you about the dishes because of the underlying reasons, but there's more underlying reasons. If I feel disrespected with other fucking things, that's gonna come up in the fight too. What do you do? What do you do? Wait, I thought we were talking about the dishes. Now we're talking about um, your brother Bobby now. Now we're talking about um, the cat that died five years ago because I, you know, forgot to give it water or fucking something, something, something. left the door open and it ran out, you know? Now it's, um, you don't care about the dishes. Now you don't care about the cat. Now you don't care about my brother having cancer. And, okay? Um, anyways, it's very important that when you guys are having a fight with a cluster B individual, because our minds go to different things, okay? You, you may do this too, um, but I have noticed that I do this. I've noticed that my mother does this too. Um, you know, it just fucking happens. Stay on topic. So if you were upset about the dishes, just um, have a conversation about the dishes. If they start segueing away about other things, say, hold on. And realize that there is an underlying issue, if you can. Usually you can't when you're really angry. That's why working on being present is so important um, so things don't escalate. So you can self-reflect before getting into a fight, all that shit. I know I'm talking to you guys about things that I have to work on, but if I have to do this shit, so do you. I, all right. Um, another thing. <sighs> Sometimes um, your cluster B person is um, afraid to show anger. They're afraid. Uh, I can see where, like how I was talking about getting too out of control. Um, I may lose the relationship, you know. Sometimes, sometimes I don't care. Sometimes I'm so fucking pissed off, I don't give a shit. And I'm just going to um, rage on you. I don't care. Blowing up the relationship, I am so angry that it does not matter in that moment. Um, but sometimes, um, you know, this is where the resentments come up. Um, I'm trying to uh, not show. I have seen this in uh, my past partners where they are withholding their feelings about me. They're just keeping resentments about me until a final blow up or even um, a calm um, D 
devalue, a very calm devalue. I think um, that's more hurtful, not um, yelling or getting a little bit fiery and is having this banter back, but the calm devalue, um, I feel so much hate from my person and it's very painful. Um, so if a narcissistic person is worried about losing you, um, whether it's um, just getting, you know, having you in their space, not being alone, um, you know, you hold value to them, something, and they don't wanna lose that, could be financial support, whatever. And they don't want to lose it, so they're going to suppress their anger. A uh, borderline doesn't want to be abandoned, so um, they're going to hold it down and turn it inward. And they may become depressed. Fuck, a narcissistic person may become depressed and just be fucking swimming around in their void, you know? Um, a paranoid will be afraid to lose their prosecutors persecutors whatever um they'll they'll be afraid to lose the person that um they're fucking always judging always thinking that they're being fucked with what are they going to do when they're by themselves they can't point a finger and make and project and say you're doing this to me so they'll suppress their anger okay so in the end, the, the mental disorder gives no fucks. You are devalued. Um, and you will be punished for your crimes, real or imagined, until we sabotage the relationship in the end. Yay! Curtain drawn. The end. Bow. All right. So I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any um, you want to share with the class, any things that you have done um, or things that you have witnessed from a partner, maybe you self-reflected on something, you know, that would be nice. If you guys would be like, well, under, you know, a lot more uh, speculation and, um, you know, self-reflection, I see that my partner isn't evil, that they were just reacting their childhood trauma. That would be fucking great. All right. Anyways, I hope that was helpful. Have a great day. Stop being passive aggressive. Namaste.